pay special attention when Brooks talks about after their feature on Shark Tank, what happens to their website. Also, you'll never believe what happened to them personally. Also pay special attention when they went to their first trade show and what happened and what famous rapper actually wore their sunglasses. All right, Jeremy Weiss here. We're here with Brooks Dame, the young, energetic founder of Proof Eyewear, which is a fashionable sunglass brand that's committed to doing good in the world through its social business model. Now, this is interesting. One of their initiatives is providing sight-saving surgery for someone in India for every pair of glasses sold. And to top it off, their eyeglass frames are actually made of sustainable wood. Uh, they started in the hit TV show Shark Tank and... They were, have been seen on faces like Snoop Dogg, Beyonce, and there was one other one, Brooks. What was it? Kelly Rowland, Yellow Wolf. We've got a couple. Nice. And Denim Brown, the uh, Lakers. Oh, nice. <laughs> a fun fact about Brooks is, obviously you could see he looks like one of the nicest guys in the world, but what you wouldn't know about him, when he gets on the soccer field, he turns into a monster, and he gets physical, and, and he's even known to get in some yelling matches. It's true. Um, so, I'm not proud of it, but it's true. Okay. Now, we get some comments, Brooke, from people. They have tons of ideas. They don't know where to start. Or they've started, and they don't know how to get you know get started on their sales. Um, so I'd love for you to talk about how do we go from having that idea to making our first dollar. And basically, how it started with your grandpa's opportunity in lumber that's turned now into wooden glasses that are distributed all over the world. Um, could you tell us a little bit, how did you come up with the idea? Sure. So uh, I guess touching on my grandpa and that, that history, he uh, he was coming off for an old guy and was a was a uh, truck driver. Mm -hmm. And he used to haul wood and then different products for, for people. And he had a customer that couldn't pay him. And so they basically said, hey, I've got some wood manufacturing equipment. Can you take this and set payment? And he says, well, I guess it's better than not getting money and I'll figure out something to do with it. And so... He uh, could have scrapped it or could have sold it, and he decided, hey, you know, maybe I should figure out how to work this, and started running some molders and molding his own uh, moldings out of wood. And uh, he would do that during the week, and then on the weekends he'd head down to California and, and sell it down in California, then come back and do that again in the weekend. Basically, just was a hustler. And so he started that, and that business is actually still in our family today. It's been uh, almost 60 years now, and, wow. and uh, he's he established that, and we have about 1,900 employees. Uh, here in here in the U.S. and uh, it's, it's kind of a cool cool business and an exciting exciting business. And so he started that, and then um, the idea for Proof came um, really as a hobby more than anything. I was in the garage and I wanted to create a consumer product, and I really liked the medium of wood because I'd used it and, and grown up with it. And I was trying to make a bamboo ski pole, and so I uh, tried that for a while, and it just didn't really turn out well. I mean, the idea was. You know, frankly, it, it was a crappy idea. <laughs> Do you ski, or why the bamboo ski pole? Yeah. No, we, uh, my whole family skis, and, and I thought, you know, I uh, actually saw this old pair of bamboo ski poles on our cabin wall for decoration, and I thought, you know, that would be cool if you did kind of a modern take on it. It's wood, bamboo's light, it's strong. Mm -hmm. It'd be a conversation piece when you're riding up the chairlift, and, you know, I, I could probably sell a couple of those, too, in the, in the process, and I just couldn't get it right, and so I scrapped that idea, but I still want to do something with wood and that medium. And so uh, I started kind of looking at uh, different products, and I found a, I saw a pair of uh, reading glasses from Japan, and I uh, thought, you know, set, like 18th century reading glasses. I thought, wow, that's kind of cool, you know. And so I figured, you know, if they could do it with reading glasses, why couldn't we do sunglasses or something like a modern take on it? And that's kind of how Proof was born uh, in my garage, and that's kind of how it got started. So what did the first prototype look like, like when you made it in the garage? Yeah, they're pretty uh, pretty rugged. They're pretty. Let me let me grab them for you. Oh yeah, nice. We're waiting for Brooks. Those of you tuning in now, uh, he's gonna bring us. Sorry. One of the glasses. No. But, so this is kind of. Uh, oh wow. How, how they start and so yeah. it's just really a, ch a chunk of wood and cut them out and you got your nose piece and, and all that and so 
the first ones didn't really have a whole lot of curve to them or a whole lot of bend. They were just mm-hmm. pretty, pretty uh, rudimentary, pretty rugged. So that's really how they started. Nice. So early on, can you tell us a moment when? And it will go later because I and I, you get distribution all over the world and. But what was early on like when it felt like it was almost impossible to get some of those customers or sales? Early on, I mean, it was uh, it was kind of like pulling teeth. And, and to be honest, it, it was exciting any sale that we got. And mm-hmm. so whether it was like a family member and grandma was buying a pair or <laughs> a neighbor. And so that's really how the sales started. And it kind of got to a point where it's like, you know, this maybe isn't a good idea. You know, we're, we're really not going to sell very many. And... Uh, my, uh, I basically built the website. I was working my day job, and then at night I build the website and, and work on the proof. So we built the website, and we kind of put out this whole media blast, and we're tweeting and doing all those things. And uh, we actually have like 15 sales the very first day when we went really? live on our website. And so that was pretty exciting. And I think a lot of them were people that just kind of were friends and family, and kind of friends of friends that heard about. It. A few were just people that were random. And so. Um, I would uh, go and get the orders and then package everything up at night, and then on my lunch break the next day, I would ship them all at the post office. So it was a kind of an interesting progression because we hit this point, and you know, I was I was excited about two or three sales a day, and it was like, oh, we're just like we made it, you know. <laughs> and uh, as time went on, I kept on going to the, the post office, and the lady at the post office we became pretty good friends because I was in there every day. And every you know every couple of weeks, it kept getting more and more. And she's like, wow, like she kind of got to the point like, what are you doing? What do you what do you do? Why are you what, you're always shipping stuff? You have an eBay business or something? And I said, no, we're we're making sunglasses, and and uh, you know it's starting to take off a little bit. And she's like. Well, it seems like you, you know, business is good. And then it got to the point where, you know, today, the uh, actually as we were chatting here, the the postman just comes and picks up the stuff and takes a couple bags away to the post office for us. So it's it's that transition was kind of it was interesting. But there was, you know, at, early on it was every sale was exciting, even when right. there was one or two. And uh, you know, they got to a point where it was like, you know, really, can I do this forever? Do I really want to like go to work all day, come home? And then try to you know package a bunch of glasses up yeah. and then ship them the next day to their lunch. And so there came a point where it's a little discouraging, and it was it was like you know what's going to be the breakthrough, or is, is this all there is to it? Right. Let me ask you. Early on, obviously you had the bamboo ski poles, and you decided to scrap the idea. And even mm-hmm. early on with this, you said, well, you didn't know if this was going to work. What made you push through further with the the, the glasses? Yeah, so it kind of, it, it, it's been a progression, so it kind of has continued to, to take on a, kind of a life of its own, and uh, after a while, I was doing this in, in my garage, I brought in my two younger brothers to, to help me out, and they were both in college at the time, and so I was doing a lot of the, kind of all the, the heavy lifting, I guess, to, you know, and uh, they both came on, and about that time, things kept on progressing, and we started getting shops like in California, and it just started snowballing, so like we'd get into one shop and we get another shop and then we started getting in, like interest from big retailers and uh, we went to uh, a trade show and our very first trade show I mean we launched the website literally probably two weeks before this trade show so we were just an unknown no one knew who we were no one heard of proof and we show up and we just had everything kind of on point our packaging and then our booth and everything and we put sawdust on the floor in the booth and it was just you know nice. really, really well done you know and and uh, people said, like, oh, yeah, I've heard of you guys. And we're like, oh, really? And wow. we've, only been around, we've only been around two weeks. You know, and, like, and so some people had heard of us, had literally heard of us. Other people just thought they'd heard of us because, or thought they'd seen us because, you know, we were so, we'd seen like a more established brand. A lot of people came to the booth and said, wow, you like, you know, we'd say, we've only been around two weeks, really. And they thought, you guys seem like you've been around four years. Like, you know, I've never seen someone like a startup be like this on point. And so, that kind of went to our credibility, and the store said, well, you know, if they're this far along down the down the path, they must be pretty good operators, and, you know, we'll bring you into the shop. And so that really helped out. And so we started getting into the shops, and it just kept expanding expanding. And then um, it, it uh, got to the point where, you know, some of the big guys like Paxson were, were contacting us and saying, hey, we like your glasses. We'd like to, you know, put you in some, some stores on a trial. And then that kept expanding, and, and it's just kind of grown from there. How did you get into those initial shops that got the ball rolling in California, you said? A lot of it was uh, kind of guerrilla marketing and, and just getting out there. We did a lot of just Twitter and Facebook things, and people started hearing about it. And then people were asking shops, like, hey, do you have proof? Do you carry them? And, you know, we had people going into shops and saying, 
you know, hey, you should carry this. You know, I saw these on Facebook, and I want to mm. try them on before I buy them. That helped. And, and like I said, our initial trade show was really good. I mean, we walked away with eight or nine orders, and that was like, we've made it type thing. And, you know, it wasn't at the time we thought it was, you know, the best thing ever. And looking back, it was kind of a small start. You know, we didn't have a whole lot, you know, going. But um, those initial stores started ordering and sending reorders. And then, you know, other shops, people would see them and then take them back to their cities. And a lot of it was just really viral and word of mouth type stuff. It was just kind of interesting. Our customers became our, our best advocates for, for advertising. And we didn't have a budget for advertising. And so they would just get out there and, and really, you know, push it. So it was kind of uh, an interesting progression. Was there one that sticks out that being the most pivotal or the biggest connection that you made so far? Um, you know, Paxson was kind of like now we're playing with the big boys a little bit. So when we got into Paxson, it was it was it kind of felt like yeah, we've we've reached a different level. And um, you know, also just getting you know. Uh, an email and, and someone sending a picture saying, "Hey, Snoop Dogg's wearing your glasses." It was kind of like, "Here we are, you know, three guys from Idaho, and all of a sudden, you know, one of the most famous rappers in the world is, and someone that I grew up listening to, you know, in high school, is wearing our glasses." And so it's kind of the point where, like, wow. But honestly, like, I get as excited when I see a complete stranger wearing them. You know, it's one thing if you see a, your friend wearing them or something. It's like, oh yeah, I, I, I gave you that pair, right. but. When you walk around and just like you do a double take, like, hey, that guy's wearing proofs. You know? It's amazing. And so yeah. it's, it's kind of a great feeling from that standpoint. I get just as excited when I see, you know, the average Joe on the, sh on the street wearing our stuff as I do, you know, mm -hmm. having a big, you know, name wearing them. So it's kind yeah. of exciting either. That is exciting. Yeah. It's hit the mainstream, right? Yeah, exactly. So exactly. Brooks, what's been um, the biggest milestone in the business or, or a point where you're most proud of so far? Um, yeah, it's kind of a hard one to think of, uh, you know, pinpoint just one. I mean, it's it, we've had milestones throughout. I mean, like, you know, our first trade show and to get to the trade show in two weeks after our launch, that was like, doing that was huge. I mean, we went to the show and someone was across the, the way from us and they said, hey, this is your first show. And they this this was a, someone that had sold to like Urban Outfitters and a lot of big companies. And they just said, you know, don't get discouraged. It's okay. You know, you might not get any orders. And and uh, about the second day, I looked over and our booth just like inundated. We had you know a group from South Korea and you wow. know a group from New York and 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 he looked over at me and he just started shaking his head like, wow. Like and his his uh, his girlfriend actually was one of the first shops we went into in San Francisco, one oh, wow. of the first order place because he's like these guys are killing it. Like you need to go in there and, and make something happen. So um, so that was a cool milestone because it was kind of like we went in there and made that happen. Um, definitely once we finally kind of moved out of the garage, we, we actually literally were in the garage. February was a year ago, um, that we moved out of the garage. Oh, out of wow. my garage. So we, we operated in my garage for quite a long time and we're working around cars and sometimes my dog was out there and the summertime we, you know, crank the, crank the garage door open, let some air in in the wintertime, you know, my brother, my brother was out there and, and freezing cold and Tanner was out there shipping and wearing gloves so he could check his emails. And so, um, that was kind of a milestone. And then, you know, we started actually, you know, bringing people in to work with us and, and help with the shipping. That was kind of like, you know, now we're kind of more of an official company. It's not just us in it. We've now got some employees and people that are along with the ride. And then, um, you know, getting to a store like PacSun, seeing your, you know, glasses on, you know, the big stars. And most recently is, is Shark Tank. I mean, that kind of felt like a, a milestone in itself because, it kind of set us apart from where we were and took us to another level as far as exposure. And, you know, our sales jumped tremendously and we had the best sales month ever in February. We had, you know, probably over 3 million hits to our website in two wow. days. And, and, uh, it just is kind of rocking us to a different, different type of level now. Yeah. And I mean, a lot of famous, we'll just add your list to the, uh, famous companies that started in a garage, right? Yeah, yeah. Us at <laughs> Apple and who else, you know? Yeah, there's a bunch there's a bunch of us out there. Um so tell us what's one thing you'd recommend the audience to do right now to get their idea started and start getting sales? No, I think, you know, for me the the biggest thing was uh is the motto screw it, just do it. <laughs> I think that a lot of times you can sit there and say, well, I got this idea. And then, you know, I have a lot of friends too that will sit there and be like, well, I got this idea. And then, well, someone stole that idea. They, you know, someone else took that to market and I should have done it, you know. And, you know, I think a lot of times you can sit there and, and go through the process of, 
well, I got to get everything perfect before I go to market. And, and I mean, honestly, we went with a prototype and, you know, we were posting pictures of our prototype, like, hey, wood sunglasses. And people were like, I got to have these. I love them. And we didn't have anything to sell. You know, people, we were sending out stickers to people to kind of keep them energized and excited with our logo on it. And, you know, they were putting on their cars and computers because we didn't have anything to sell. But it was kind of like, let's get started. Let's launch. And, uh, you know, everything else will kind of fall into place. And so I think that the idea of, of just getting out there and doing something, even if it's not quite perfect and not quite dialed in, but further enough along that you can kind of do that and dial it in on the process. And so I think that, you know, that's what I always tell entrepreneurs, like, don't, don't sit and wait. You know, I almost feel like I waited too long to even start this business and other ideas. You know, I should have been doing something more so in college rather than, you know, when I was 30. And, uh, I, you know, I kind of look at that and say, man, I could have had all that progression in that time. But now that I'm here, it's kind of like, we're really, we're really quick to go to market and bring things out and launch them. And it's, you know, it's kind of like fail fast, fail often. And that's okay. A failure is a learning experience. As long as it doesn't break the bank, you know, we're willing to try some things that maybe are a little out there. So that screw it, just do it. It's kind of, it's kind of my motto yeah. for, for getting out there and, and for entrepreneurs. Yeah, and it sounds like people, you know, people like to participate in the process. And it sounds like even early on when you're doing the prototypes, you're kind of sending updates and you're you're kind of engaging them. So that that sounds like that really helps too. It did. I mean, people bought into the bought into the idea before they bought into the products. You know, I think they bought into yeah. the idea of what Proof is about. And we we uh, work with the Aravind Eye Clinic in India, and people really like that. You know, we we give you know, give back and that's part of our ethos and part of our, you know, constitution as a company. And so, um, we did, we had these loyal followers without any product out there. I mean, we had, you know, a ton of people that were interested before. And so when we officially launched the website to sell 15 glasses in the first night, like I was like, this is awesome. You know, I can't believe, I can't believe how much money we have in the PayPal account. <laughs> and, uh, so it was a lot of fun. And so I think that people do like to sit in the process and, and like to be involved and kind of feel like, you know, we have a lot of people, like, we started getting on famous people's faces. It was like, I knew you when you were, you know, when you were just a small company. And it's like, oh, now you're not mainstream. You're not indie anymore. You guys blew up. And so it's kind of funny that people, you know, have kind of have those feelings about the whole process. Right. Which is they funny. like to be, like, they discovered you, right? No, exactly. Yeah. You know, it's like, I knew you before you were cool type thing. So, <laughs> so Brooks, what are some tools, software systems you use in your life and your business um. Yeah. So basically, we use uh, always on you know all the social media outlets. So you know you know the Facebooks, the Twitters, Instagrams. We do a lot of contests and a lot of updates, and we do some things just through those for those people that are following us there for like discounts and things to kind of get them excited about you know the next next product coming out or you know holiday sale or whatever it may be. So we always use social media on a large scale. Um, we use kind of the standard stuff that a lot of companies out there probably use Intuit for our accounting and, and uh, we run all our emails and all that through Gmail and you know, our, our website was built on a WordPress um, you know, template and so a lot of the stuff is you know, low cost and has kind of helped us keep our cost and our overhead down without having to get a big system. We're finally getting to the point where you know, finding an inventory management and, and uh, Kind of managing things a little bit sharper and a little bit tighter than we have in the past, and so we're we actually just and we haven't even hardly got into it, but we're using a, a company called Fishbowl for uh, inventory management, hmm. and uh, we we actually haven't even totally implemented it yet. We're just at the beginning stages, really this week. So, um, so yeah, those are probably the main you know uh, tools that we're using right now. I get the question when I talk to entrepreneurs. They always want me to ask. They they like to know the, some of the mundane details of like the person's daily routine. Is there something interesting or or different about your daily routine that you incorporate, whether it's you know in the in your you know personal life or business? Um, that's like that's different. I don't know. If that's interesting. I'm pretty boring. I mean, honestly, I I uh, I'm kind of a night owl, so I stay up pretty late and I wake up pretty early just because I think that there's a lot to get done and you know I uh, I usually wake up about 6, 6.30 and, and kind of hit it and um, there's you know certain websites that I probably go to like every day just to kind of see what's going on and you know mm -hmm. but uh, yeah in general I'm, I'm, I'm pretty boring I mean I, I, I spend uh, I spend time at work and and uh, spend time at proof and working on I always try to set aside a little bit of time to work on uh, product development and things that you know just kind of see what's out there see what's new things that are coming and I think 
a lot of times you can spend a lot of time working in your business and not on your business. And that's one of the things that, uh, you know, I think we catch ourselves doing a lot because there's, there's just a lot to do on the day to day. And so yeah. I think it's really important to set aside some time to work on your business, whether it's new product development, how to get to the next level, strategy. And so I always try to spend a little bit of time weekly developing new product or thinking through some new things or how can we partner with our, you know, further partner, collaborate with our, our, our retail partners or um, other brands that are out there. And so I think that, you know, we spend a good amount of time trying to figure out those types of things, which yeah. I think is so us kind of stay ahead of the curb and, and uh, accelerate the business. Yeah. So I have one final question. Okay. Before I ask it, just tell the audience a little bit more about your business and what you're working on now. So they kind of understand. So as you you explained, Proof is, is is basically an eyewear company, and we do some accessories like wallets, and we have a clothing line. Um, and so we uh, basically make all our glasses from eco-friendly materials, woods. Uh, we also de- developed an eco-acetate. So most plastic glasses are made from, like your typical Ray-Bans, Oakleys are made from um, plastic derived from uh, oil. Our plastics actually derive from plant cellulose, so it's biodegradable. It's 100% uh, eco-friendly, and so um, we developed that recently. We actually have a skate line that we do, and uh, right now we're we're working on on growth and trying to um, get more out there on the international distribution side. We have quite a, a good network of of shops internationally and here in the U.S., but uh, we think there's really good opportunity. We're getting a lot of inquiries um, about taking proof international, and so we're working on that. And uh, really, just trying to develop our sales network a little bit better, working with you know different reps and trying to to work that a little bit more. And like I said, product development, come out with new things that kind of keep us fresh and in the front of people's minds. And you know, we might develop a wallet or a small accessory, and people are like, oh, that's really cool, and it brings them back to our website. And they're like, oh, wow, I didn't know Proof was doing this on their glasses, or and end up buying you know a couple hundred dollars worth of stuff, you know, really quick. And when they just went on to buy like a twenty dollar wallet, so it's. It's kind of those, uh, they talk about gateway drugs. We kind of have those gateway products that, you know, <laughs> kind of get people in and, and excited about proof. And maybe it's, you know, maybe you don't have, you know, a, a big bank account. And so maybe it's like, well, I want to support them in a small way. And then mm-hmm. later on down the road, come back and, and do some of the more, you know, big dollar purchases. What's the so, website yeah. so people can check it out? Because they definitely should. So, yeah, the website is IWantProof.com, all one word. So, IWantProof.com, and then, you know, you can follow us on Twitter at IWantProof, Instagram at Proof Eyewear, and then we're on Facebook and all that, too. So yeah. Great. And my final question, which I have to ask, is, so, like, if you're sitting around at night having beers with your brothers or whatever, what's the story you tell behind the scenes when you're on Shark Tank? Um... Yeah, we uh we don't drink beers, but uh <laughs> but uh we we it was it's kind of funny because the what you saw in Shark Tank is was pretty real. I mean, it was really I always say that I've told people that Shark Tank is probably the most real reality TV gets. And uh, I mean, it was like walk in the tank and you pitch. We uh, actually pitched for like an hour and a half. Wow. And uh it cut it down to about 10 minutes. And there was there was it was there was a lot of back and forth that was going on and and um, you know we walked out of the Shark Tank after we turned down the deals and um, hopped in our rental car and kind of just drove down PCH like and didn't say a whole lot to each other it was like a little bit of a surreal feeling and, and a little bit we were kind of like did we do the right thing I mean we just walked away from one hundred fifty thousand dollars you know given we we're going to give up some equity in our company but you know what could we have done with one hundred fifty thousand dollars. And then it was kind of we kind of started talking a little bit more. And it was like, no, we're gonna we're gonna make this work. We're gonna we're gonna do what we need to do to be successful. And you know, um, it's really worked out really well for us. You know, the end of the end of the year ended up being a lot better than we'd even budgeted when we went on on the show to to pitch. And then the exposure from Shark Tank has been really good. So we, you know, like I said, we kind of were we questioned it for a little bit. We were a little bit shell shocked. Like, did we do the right thing? You know, because it seems like. Sometimes you walk away from the money or don't get a deal. Those companies end up not being as successful afterwards. And we kind of determined, you know, amongst ourselves that, hey, we're going to be successful on our own and we're going to make this thing work. Yeah, I remember my wife and I were watching it on a Friday night. And, like, people must have fallen in love with you guys because you're just so genuine, just seem so nice. And um, it just was great to watch watch that part of the show for sure. Um, was there anything that surprised you about being on? 
Yeah, no. It, well, to your comment, people are people are really. Uh, I was I was actually shocked about how many people reached out and were you know made those comments and just said, "Hey, you know, I wasn't gonna buy a pair of glasses. I don't need some, but uh, I'm gonna buy some for a friend just because I believe in you guys and I believe in your company and what you stand right. for." And, uh, you know, I believe that you're genuine individuals and we need more, you know, business leaders and entrepreneurs like you, you know, it's, it's easy to find, you know, um, uh, CEOs and and chairman of the board that that have big egos and, you know, those guys are a dime a dozen, but it's hard to find, um, business leaders that really believe in people and believe in what they're doing and think that, you know, it's, it's people over profits and, uh, so it was really interesting. I mean, we got handwritten letters from people, you know, so we got just, yeah, a lot of stuff like that, which to me was just a really uh, flattering thing, you know, more than mm-hmm. anything. And so, you know, you know, as a company, it was really flattering and, and uh, it kind of you know, meant a lot to us, really, because we kind of left thinking, you know, geez, I wonder how that went went over. And the feedback was just like overwhelming, like, hey, you guys did the exact right thing. You came off, you know, exactly the way you guys really are. They didn't make you look like you were jerks or, or dishonest or crooks or anything like that. And so that was really shocking. I mean, we had, uh, there's a couple of marriage proposals asking if any of the brothers were single, you know? Oh, really? Yeah. So, and you know, it, it was just interesting the, the amount of people that came back afterwards, you know, saying, Hey, you know, um, we were just really believing what you're doing. And, you know, also the yeah. amount of people that said, Hey, I'll, I'll, you know, we'll front you the money, you know, we'll, you know, we'll lend you the money. We had some bankers that said, Hey, you know, why would you Why would you give up equity? We'll just give you a loan. You know, we'll give you a small business loan. And so, it was really interesting the outpouring from the community and just people that you know, complete strangers, that uh, were really supportive of us. So yeah. it was cool. Thank you, Brooks. I really appreciate you uh, taking the time, coming out and telling your story. And people should definitely check out your site. And I want to be the first one to just thank Thank you very much. No, I appreciate it. Thanks for taking the time to set it All up. Right.